Everywhere we've looked the last couple of years, there's been a lot of talk about getting kids vaccinated against COVID. But what about the routine vaccines for childhood diseases? What's happened with those? Well, the state of Ohio requires all students starting kindergarten to be vaccinated against things like measles, mumps, diphtheria, and more. So how well is your kid's school following the rules? News 5 investigator Jonathan Walsh uncovers a troubling trend. We have now topped 105,000 coronavirus have died. We are trying to come out of a worldwide pandemic, and Jenny Weiss from Cleveland is worried. Because I don't want another outbreak. I don't want to be stuck in my house. Her two sons attend Cleveland Metro's Charles A. Mooney School on the west side, a school our investigation reveals that even before the pandemic, more than half the kindergartners were missing at least one vaccination for infections like diphtheria, measles, and whooping cough. My kids, in order to go to kindergarten, they had to be updated on all their shots. So I had to call the doctor. And when the pandemic hit, things got worse in Ohio. We analyzed childhood vaccination rates for kindergartners since 2017. We found both during the pandemic and pre-pandemic, numerous schools and districts across our area have been falling short of what Ohio laws require. So much so, local doctors are concerned. It was fascinating to see uh, which schools were on that list. And it's not just the Charles Mooney School. Many other CMSD schools had problems too before the pandemic. Cleveland parents we talked to had no idea. You know, it ain't like they're gonna walk around saying, oh, I got a shot. Ohio law makes it clear. Students who don't meet the full requirements, do not provide proof of immunizations, do not have immunization exemption, or who are not in process of getting the shots, are not permitted to remain in school for more than 14 days. If they're not going to do it, they should be remote. Let, have them do at home learning until they're vaccinated. CMSD refused to go on camera, but did send a statement that said in part, families might lack a regular medical provider or fail to submit documentation. The data shows Akron also saw concerning rates even before the pandemic. Akron did not go on camera either, but did say in part, if a student's vaccine series is in progress, the student can attend classes. The data though shows only some families claim they are in process, but religious or health exemptions are very rare. We're certainly concerned that immunization rates are lower than they have been previously. Dr. David Karras is a pediatrician with Akron Children's Hospital. We really want to have those conversations with families to reassure them that vaccines are safe and important. The Ohio Department of Education says it does not enforce the vaccination requirements. The Ohio Department of Health tells us it doesn't either, but that it's up to the school district's nurses and administrators to impose the rules on vaccinations. When I saw the data, I thought, oh, wow, this is this is clearly a health and safety issue that we need. To, it's another one of the health and safety issues that we need to work through. Ralphie Johnson is Breakthrough Charter School's new CEO. The system in Cleveland has also struggled with vaccinations despite state requirements. That probably is what the letter of the law says. I think having a kindergartner who needs to go to school and not be in school is not a good thing. And that was a common theme. Our mission is to educate children first and foremost. Uh, we're going to do that, and we're not going to let anything get in the way. Natalie Long from Excel Schools tells us rates depend on nurses getting the correct data to ODH, parent involvement with their children, and consistent staffing. She says despite its high rates, Excel won't keep kids out of school, and parents who might be worried about that. If they have a concern, like why are these kids still allowed to be in class, what would you say to that? I would say that is a direct result of free and appropriate public education. Uh, we can't prohibit a child from attending um, despite their vaccination status. Doctors and the Ohio Department of Health tell us nurses and administrators actually can prevent non-fully vaccinated students from attending class. What fascinated me about that is that the school nurses allowed them uh, to go to school. And the protection the vaccines provide is important. For three years, just before COVID, our state saw 167 cases of mumps, 1,300 cases of chickenpox, and nearly 2,500 patients with whooping cough. So Jenny pleads with parents now to do what's required for her son's sake and for all students. Please get your kids vaccinated. It's for their health. Now, we should note, it doesn't appear that politics are involved with why students aren't getting these kinds of vaccines. Also in our research, it appears there's no oversight on the vaccination requirements, no real consequences if they're not followed. 
Courtney? You just uncovered so many things that we did not know. And Jonathan, is there anything that the schools have learned through the pandemic that might help with other vaccinations? Sure. As a matter of fact, administrators tell us they figured out how to get COVID vaccines to students. So now they can use that experience to perhaps help increase these other vaccines as well. All right. Thanks so much, Jonathan. We really appreciate that. So how is your child's school doing? You can search for your school's vaccination rates on a website that's news5cleveland.com. You can also find it on our News 5 app.